My name is Dr. Michael Rothman. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Jerry and Edison Public Library for inviting me to give my, my talk tonight. Uh, tonight's talk is going to be uh, safe use of nutritional supplements, five, five big mistakes. So just to let you know a little bit about the speaker, um, I'm board certified in internal medicine and board certified in emergency medicine. I have a practice in East Brunswick, New Jersey. It's called MD Wellness and Aesthetics. And everybody has a handout that contact information is there. There's a, a good turnout tonight, and I certainly appreciate that you're here. And there's a lot of interest in nutritional supplements. I would bet that just about everybody in this room is taking nutritional supplements or has been recommended supplements by their doctor. And there's a lot of people that have a lot of misunderstandings about nutritional supplements. Um, so what I'd like to do tonight is clarify uh, how I use them and how you probably should be thinking about them. What you're going to hear tonight um, is probably a lot of things that you haven't heard before. Some things that may really upset you and upset your beliefs. I can tell you that everything that I'm telling you tonight is based on scientific literature. It's not based on my opinion or my beliefs. And a lot of people say, ask me, Doc, do you believe in this or do you believe in that? And it really doesn't matter what I believe. What matters is the truth and the reality of the situation. So um, if anybody wants references, I can certainly provide them. So I want to start with something that I call the Goldilocks principle. And I like to use this idea because everybody's heard this story about Goldilocks and the three bears. So Goldilocks breaks into this house and either the soup was too hot or too cold or the bed was too hard or too soft or it was just right. And basically, if you want to be healthy, you want your soup to be right. If there's imbalance in your body, chemistry, your soup, so to say, you will experience symptoms. And so we're trying to treat these symptoms by fixing our body chemistry. At least that's what you should be trying to do. And for every nutrient, there's a certain place on this curve where you're going to have a balance, just the right amount of that nutrient. So any lack of nutrients, so let's say over here is too little and over here is too much, you can fill in the blank for any nutrient and say you can have too little or too much of these. And I just want to use a few examples to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Let's start with water. Too little water is dangerous. We all know that, right? You become dehydrated. It can lead to kidney failure and palpitations and fainting spells and and death eventually. What a lot of people, and so over here there's the optimal amount of water, and then over here it becomes too much water. And a lot of people say, Doc, can you really have too much water? And the answer is absolutely. Too much or too little of anything is no good. Too much water, you'll actually start to um, overhydrate yourself. You'll dilute down your minerals, and you'll, your sodium will drop, your potassium will drop. You can actually have a seizure. You could go insane and you can die from too much water. You may have heard stories of college kids during hazing drinking water and dying. So, so if water can do this, what about other things? What about vitamin C? Too little? Too much? Calcium? Whatever it is. Fill in the blank. If it's a nutrient, there's such a thing as an optimal amount. So for nutrients, too much is no good. Too little is no good. You want it to be just right. And there's sort of a range there for how much just right is. It's up in here. It doesn't have to be exactly at that point. But you want to be somewhere in this area here. If you're over here or over here, you're going to have symptoms from this imbalance. Now, how about for poisons? Is there an optimal amount of poison? And absolutely the answer for that is no, right? A lot of people ask me, Doc, what's better, saccharin or NutraSweet? Like, <laughs> neither one is better, okay? One may be less bad than the other, but that doesn't make it good for you. A lot of diabetics, oh, doc, should I be using these artificial sweeteners? And the answer is, well, no, they're poisons. Well, are they better than sugar? Well, sugar's a poison too, so get those out of your system. You may not have heard these things referred to this way, but the reality is that's what they are. So there's no amount, optimal amount of a poison. Less is always better. By the way, most medications that you take are poisons. They block or inhibit things. And that doesn't mean they don't have their place, but they're not going to fix what's wrong. You're not going to achieve metabolic balance taking a medicine to treat a symptom. Nor are you going to achieve metabolic balance taking a supplement to treat a symptom. That's going to be one of the take-home messages from this talk. 
So I want to start with some really common things that are mythologically, hey, just take as much as you want. One of those things is the myth. If you take extra vitamin C, since it is water-soluble, you will just pee this out. How many people here have heard this? Okay. Is this true? Well, yeah. If you take too much vitamin C, absolutely, you will pee it out. That's not, I'm not going to dispute that. The question is, what happens in that process? And the, pro- and the, the reality is, excess vitamin C can only be eliminated from the body by attaching to a mineral. So if you take too much vitamin C, guess what? You're wasting minerals. You can take too much vitamin C. It's very dangerous to do this. Now, you're not going to kill yourself in a day or two, but how about if you do this over weeks or months or years? So there's many minerals that are pulled along with this vitamin C. You cannot excrete it without these minerals. So it will deplete the following minerals, calcium, magnesium, zinc, and copper. So in addition to depleting these minerals, it also interferes specifically with copper metabolism. It decreases the activity of of an enzyme called ceruplasmum, um, and so it's a double whammy on copper. So not only do you deplete the copper, but you interfere with the uh, metabolism of copper. And I'm going to talk about copper a little bit more because it's it's important. Megadose vitamin C, it has antioxidant activity at physiological levels. Let's just talk about antioxidants for a second. We burn stuff to make energy. We actually have a little furnace inside of us, essentially, and we burn stuff to make energy. When we burn stuff, we put off like a heat, right? And that heat, using metaphors here, are free radicals. So when we burn stuff to make energy, we put out free radicals. This is like a fire in our system. There's plenty of seats up front. So we need a fire extinguisher to guard us against this fire, and those are the antioxidants. So how do we burn stuff? We use oxygen, right? If you had a fire and you got rid of all the oxygen, the fire would actually go out. And so we need oxygen to burn our stuff, and then we create free radicals when we burn stuff. So the antioxidants protect us from free radical damage. So at physiological levels, in other words, when when the soup is just right, the vitamin C acts as an antioxidant. However, if you have excessive amounts of vitamin C, it actually becomes a pro-oxidant. It causes oxidative stress once you exceed at a certain level because the antioxidants work together as a group. And if the one exceeds more than the others, it actually becomes a, a free radical itself. So you want to be careful about that. At, at, at other doses, it can become an acidifying agent. It's ascorbic acid. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next um, myth here, and that's zinc supplementation. The myth is that zinc is good for colds. Have you heard that one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Zinc is good for diabetes. Zinc is good for your prostate. So if I had a patient, they had a cold, would I recommend zinc for them? The answer is, well, no. And here's how this, you can sort of explain what happens. Let's say you have a zinc deficiency, and you have a cold at the same time, and now you take zinc. Well, you fixed what was wrong. You had a zinc deficiency, you took zinc, and now you no longer have a zinc deficiency. Your body will work better, and it may help your cold. But if you don't have a zinc deficiency, and you take zinc, you're not going to help your cold. You're going to actually have too much zinc. This could actually hurt your immune system. So you, you end up going overboard on this. So, and it's true that zinc is... Um, you may have high levels of zinc in your pancreas, and that's why people say it's good for diabetes, and there's high levels of zinc in your prostate but it's not necessarily good for these things. It's only good for a zinc deficiency. And if you come out of here with one thing in mind, the only thing supplements are really good for are to, to replete, to replace things that are missing. If you're taking them and you're going above and beyond the physiological level, if you've gone over that U-shaped curve to the other side, now you're actually having an, an excess of whatever it is that you're trying to put in there, and it's creating a new imbalance. And over time, it can cause uh, symptoms itself.